ending to this particular session and in the last one we finished up full reposition so quite obviously now time to move over to partial reposition i i have already talked about the meaning of partial reposition suppose four items have been sold and some default has been committed but this time entire lot of four items are not repossessed default has been committed but hire vendor decides to take back only three item and leave one item with the hire purchaser so that will become a case of partial reposition so now we'll pick up partial reposition and in order to pick up partial reposition although there is question number 3.1 which i will pick up later on first i am going to start the session with 3.2 so please pay attention now towards 3.2 it's a pretty formidable uh, section it is important from the examination point of view and if you will look into the frequency almost every year question is getting tossed off from this particular section so pay attention 3.2 is the question which we are picking up to understand the conceptualities of partial reposition on 1 1 2020 x a television dealer that means purchaser bought five sets from dolphin television company television company is the seller and television dealer television dealer is purchased five sets were bought on higher purchase system further the question states that the cash price of each set was rupees twenty thousand cash price of each set is given it is also given that it was agreed that twenty five thousand should be paid immediately down payment and the balance in three annual installments of 30,000 each at the end of each year. So three more installments. Television company, that is seller, charges 10% interest per annum. Further, it is given that buyer depreciates the television sets at the rate of 20% on diminishing balance method, buyer's rate of depreciation. X paid the cash down payment paid the first two installment first and second but failed to pay the last installment third and final installment was not paid so default is committed consequently the television company seller repossessed three sets how many sets were sold five how many are being actually repossessed only three so that is why it is a case of partial reposition we are not repossessing the entire lot of five sets so that means three sets have been repossessed and two sets have been left with the buyer or are still with the buyer or are retained by the buyer leaving two sets with the buyer and adjusting the value of three sets against the amount due adjusting the value of three set against the amount due what does this particular line would mean that i will let you know when i am going to solve the question importantly under partial reposition you will be given rate of depreciation of seller also hitherto till up to the question which we have done in none of the question actually we saw rate of depreciation of the seller but in case of partial reposition seller's rate of depreciation will also be given it is given that the sets were repossessed and were valued on the basis of 30 percent depreciation per annum on written down value so when higher vendor would take back the what we call assets he is going to charge on such assets his own depreciation correct further it is given that sets after being repossessed were sold by the television company for 30,000 after necessary repairs amounting to rupees 5,000. So this is the question and obviously this is the first question of this method so I will have to solve this question. So in order to solve this question let's move to this particular part and uh, now it would be better if you can write also correct. I do not know how many among you are writing or not. Anyway, so first of all, let's pick up this particular question. That is 3.2. Correct. This is the question. In this question, dates are not given. I think so. Correct. Dates are not given. No problem. Dates are given or not irrespective of that. First of all, let me analyze the question now. It is always better to Analyze the question first of all in rough so that every time you need not require to look at the question. It may appear to you at first instance that it is a wastage of time, but you do not know that how much time it would save later on for you. Correct? Let us say in this question 
uh, I think date was given or not, I have forgotten, just let me have a look over this. I think date was given 1-1-2020, correct? So 1-1-2020, the date is given in the question. So on 1-1-2020, 1-1-2020. Five TV sets, five TV sets, five TV sets were bought by the buyer. And it is given the question that each set has a cash price of 20,000 each. Cash price 20,000 each. Each set is having a cash price of 20,000 each. It is given to you in the question, isn't it or not? Further, if you will look into the question, you will find that your three more installments are supposed to be paid at the end of each year. Your first year will end on 31st of 12, 2020. This is the end of the first year. Second year will end on 31st of 12, 2021. And your final year will end on 31st of 12, 2022. So it is also given in the question. And question also says that the after the what we call down payment, after the down payment, and the down payment amount was given to us as down payment amount was, uh, I think it was 25,000, so 25,000. And question had stated that three more installments we are supposed to pay 30,000, 30,000 and 30,000. Further, in this particular question, it is also given as we read the question earlier, that down payment has been paid, first installment has been paid, second installment has also been paid, but on the third installment default has been committed. Correct? Further in this question which you need to note is that your rate of depreciation is given and in this question rate of depreciation of not only the purchaser rate of depreciation of the buyer is given to you as 20 percent and it is given to us that seller's rate of depreciation is 30 percent because when he repurchases the item he valued them at 30% less, so his rate of depreciation is 30%. Is it clear to you? Further in this particular question, which you need to know, which you need to solve the answer, rate of interest is also given in this question. The rate of interest in this question was 10%. So, this is the entire analysis of this particular question. Importantly, when default was made, when default was made, how many sets were repossessed? How many sets were repossessed? Repossession. Out of five sets, as I told you, three sets were repossessed. That means two sets are still with the buyer. We call it retained. Retained means those sets which are not re repossessed. These sets are still lying with the buyer at this particular moment. Correct? So, due to default, three sets were repossessed. Now, we have to obviously solve this particular question. In order to solve the question, what we are supposed to do then? In order to solve the question, first of all, as usual, our first step will be computation of interest. So, we will do the computation of interest as we normally do. In order to compute the interest, because in this question, cash price is given to you, so, and rate of interest is also there, we will apply gross installment method, that is the first method. In one column, I am going to write here cash price. In the next column, I am going to write gross installment. In the third column, interest and cash price portion. First of all, under the column of the cash price, you write the cash price. Cash price of each TV set happens to be 20,000. Five sets have been bought. So, total cash price is how much? That is equal to 1 lakh. Then from 1 lakh, first of all, on 1-1-2020, you will, because on this date you purchase the item, you will pay the down payment. And down payment was given in the question as 25,000. 
and we know that in down payment there is no interest element entire payment is for cash price portion and interest plus cash price portion forms gross installment and so many times i have told you now that gross installment is also known as zero installment 75000 is your cash price correct this is the balance on 1 1 2020 balance outstanding is 75000 now from the beginning we will move over to the end of the year now 31st of 12 2020 at the end of the first year we shall now pay the first installment and the first installment is 30,000 as we know I will write here 30,000 now I want to know what is the amount of interest included in it for that I will have to take 10 percent of 75,000 7,500 I shall write now difference is 22,500 this 22,500 will be subtracted from 75,000 now we shall be left up with now we shall be left up with actually we shall be left up with how much we shall be left up with 52,500 this is the amount which we are supposed to pay correct still now we will move over to 31st of 12 31st of 12 2021 that is the second installment under the second installment again we are supposed to pay 30,000 now how much out of 30,000 is portion of interest. We will compute 10% of 52,500 that is equal to 5250. Now you subtract 5250 from 30,000 to get 24,750. This is your cash price portion. Cash price portion you will have to subtract from the cash price. Now you will find out the balance. What is the balance now? Balance is 27,750. Now, 31st of 12, 2022, on, this is your third installment and default is also committed on this particular installment. Moreover, this is your last installment also. Correct? Installment amount is 30,000. Under the gross installment method, that is the first method of computation of interest, I have already told you so many times now, that we will not straight away compute the amount of interest. If I will take 10% of 27,750, it will be equal to 2775. And my account will not get closed. So that is the reason I will first of all write, after writing the gross installment amount, I will write 27,750. That mean I am presuming that out of 30,000, actually I am presum presuming that 27,750 is the cash price portion because I want this account to be closed and then this cash price portion I am going to write here so this account will get closed and now I will take the difference of these two the difference will be equal to 2250 correct in the last year you will have to be a little bit cautious after having computed the rate of interest now under partial method you cannot straight away go for preparation of the ledger account correct so what you are supposed to do under the second step now under the second step now you will find out what you will find out value of goods repossessed value of goods repossessed value of goods repossessed value of goods repossessed now you will determine the value of goods repossessed out of five sets three sets have been repossessed three sets have been repossessed so you will write vendor that mean i want to know at what value vendor repossessed the three sets correct in order to know that, first of all, here you write the cost price, that is three sets. Cost of three sets repossessed at the rate of 20,000 each. We know that cash price of three sets is equal to 20,000. Remember one thing, I have written cost, you can write also cash price, because cash price from the perspective of the buyer, because we have to view the things from the buyer's angles. 
because buyer has purchased the item. So from the buyer's point of view, the cost price is equal to 20,000 because at whatever price he is going to purchase the item, that will become the cost price. So 20,000 into three, first of all, you write 60,000. This is the cost price. Now vendor is taking back these three sets, correct? Now vendor will tell to the seller, whatever may be your depreciation policy, I'm least concerned with that. In my opinion, correct, my depreciation policy is 30%. So I'm going to apply 30% rate to determine the value of these three sets after three years because repossession is being taken place at the end of the third year. So that is why now vendor, what he will do, he will charge the depreciation. Remember one thing, the rate of depreciation of vendor in, is 30%. Correct, I am writing here so that you should not have any confusion. Rate of depreciation of vendor is 30%. Is it clear to you or not? So what will be the 30% of 60,000? That is equal to 18,000. That means at the end of the first year, in view of vendor, that is seller, these three sets is command. These three sets are commanding a value of 42,000 only. He will charge the depreciation for second year because written down value is there where he will take 30% of this. That will be equal to 12,600. Now, we will subtract 12,600 from it. We will get 29,400. 29,400. And then, again depreciation for third year we will charge that will be equal to 8820. That means at the end of the third year, in view of vendor, vendor will consider the value of the, these three sets is equal to 20,580. This 20,580 suggests that higher vendor has taken back three, these three sets at 20,580 rupees. Actually, you need to find out only value of goods from the viewpoint of vendor but due to some reason and it will help you i would also love you to compute the value of goods repurchased from the perspective of the buyer from the perspective of the buyer also when we say from the perspective of the buyer what does it mean because buyer's rate of depreciation is 20 percent basically i want to know what was the value of these three sets which were being repurchased or which are being repurchased from the viewpoint of buyer. Cost price was 60,000, obviously three sets. Now buyer's rate of depreciation is 20%. So buyer, buyer is going to apply what we call 20%. So in view of buyer, we will see that the value of these three sets at the end of the first year is this much. Now in the second year, again, we will charge the depreciation. In the second year, depreciation 20%, 9,600. If I'm going to subtract this, I will get 38,400. Again, I will apply 20%, 7680. Now, 30,720. That means from the buyer's perspective, the value of these three sets is equal to 30,720. That means, suppose there is an item. In view of you, its value is 30,720. And if I will take that particular item at 20,580, quite obviously, because I am taking that particular item at a lower value, so that means you would incur a loss. Are you getting my point or not? That means you are going to incur a loss. So if I will take the difference of these two, that is 10,140, that is nothing but loss. In fact, we have already determined the loss. Actually, we are supposed to find out the loss in this particular question. Now, I would like to tell you basic reason why I told you to actually also find out the value of goods repurchased from buyer's perspective also. That would, that would help you in knowing the your answer much in advance. Is it clear to you? So, under partial repossession, we shall have to, we shall have to find out the value of the goods repurchased. Is it clear to you or not? Much in advance. And then, after finding this value, after finding this value, what should be your next step? Your next step should be step number three. Step number three should be, should be, just wait. Step number three. Your third step, another working you would need. 
now I am going to compute value of goods. Value of goods retained. What we mean by value of goods retained? Out of five sets, three sets have been repurchased. So value of goods ret retained means value of goods is still with the buyer. So those goods which haven't yet taken back, these goods are still with the buyer. Out of five sets, two sets are still with the buyer. And we are interested in finding out the value of what we call those goods which are still with the buyer at the end of the final year. So, two sets are still with the buyer. Two sets into 20,000. Their cost price will be equal to how much? 40,000. Isn't it or not? Their cost price will be equal to this much. Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Absolutely clear. Now, buyer's rate of depreciation is 20% because we are trying to find out the value of two sets which are still with the buyer. So, obviously, we are going to apply buyer's rate of depreciation that is 8,000. Now, we are left off with 32,000. Again, you are going to apply the what we call rate of depreciation 20% for second year. 6,400. Correct. After subtracting it, you will get 25,600. Then you will write less depreciation. Again, 20%. So, that will be equal to 5,120. That means those sets which are still with the buyer their value at the end of the third year is equal to 20,480. Now just presume you just presume yourself as the purchaser. You had bought five five sets. Now out of five sets, three sets have been repurchased. So how many sets are still with you? Two sets. Now if there are two sets with you, two TV sets are with you, that means when you are going to prepare the TV set account, because the value of two sets at the end of the third year we have computed 20,480. It means when you are going to prepare the TV sets account later on, at the end of the third year, your closing balance should be equal to 20,480. Is it clear to you or not? So this will tell you the value of your TV set much in advance. Now we can go for preparation of the ledger account. Correct. Now, generally when partial repossession questions are asked in the examination, it is being noticed of late that question is simply asking you computation of interest, value of the goods repossessed and value of the goods is still with the buyer. Only these three th things are being asked. Correct. However, we will still what we call prepare the ledger accounts. Step number four. Step number four. Under step number four, Obviously, you are going to first of all write books of purchaser. Books of purchaser. So, books of purchaser you have written now. Correct? After writing the books of purchaser, obviously, you are going to prepare a higher vendor account. That is television company from whom you have purchased the item. You are going to prepare a higher vendor account. In order to prepare the higher vendor account, correct, I will have to create a bit of a space. The problem is that you now this mouse sometimes plays front. Okay. So on 1 1 2020, first of all, towards the credit side of the higher vendor account, we have purchased TV sets. I am going to write TV sets. Entry is TV sets account debit to higher vendor account. This entry is always passed with cash price, which happens to be cost price for the higher vendor. Correct? On 1 1 2020, I am going to pay down payment. The down payment we saw is equal to 20,000, 20, 25,000, I think. It was 25,000, sorry. 
so 25000 down payment i will mm -hmm. what happens just wait some time you know this pen creates problem that is the only problem in this digital methodology okay i will write it after some time mm -hmm. This is a big problem. Just, just give me two minutes. Sometime it happened, it lacks. Now it is okay. You can see sometime, you no, know, there is lagging takes place and it creates hell of a problem. 25,000 is your down payment. And then we will reach the end of the first year, 31st of 12, 2000. 21 we will pass the entry for interest you if you remember interest was 7500 you are going to write interest 7500 then you are going to make the first installment amount of first installment is 30000 now you are going to write balance carried down Balance carried down will be equal to 52,500. So as far as ledger account are concerned, that is not a very tough nut to crack. It's pretty easy. <laughs> and then, you are going to write here, 1-1-2022. You will write here by balance brought down. In fact, this is 20. 21 one one 2021 balance brought down 52500 again on 31st of 12 2021 you are going to write interest interest is 5250 on 31st of 12 2021 you are going to write to bank this is your second installment. Second installment is 30,000. And balance carried down. So balance carried down will be equal to 27,750. So as far as second year is concerned, task is over. Now we shall come to the end, come to the final year. 1 1 2022. Balance brought down. 27,750, this is your balance. You will come to the end of the year, 31st of 12, 2020. You are going to write here by interest. Amount of interest in the final year was 2250, if you remember. Correct? Now, in the final year, 31st of 12, 2022, I was supposed to make the payment for the third installment unfortunately i did not do that correct so what happens then obviously if you are going to commit the mistake then seller has the right to take back the what we call asset which he had sold to us if all the five tv sets would have been repurposed i would have simply written tv sets and balance amount 30000 However, in this particular question, out of five sets, only three sets have been repurposed. Only three sets have been repurposed. So, first of all, you will write here two machine, two TV sets, two TV sets, correct? So, TV sets, three TV sets have been repurposed. You will write in bracket repurposition, correct? You will write in bracket working note number two or your step number two under step number two you have already computed that seller has taken back these three sets at 20,580 correct which we computed so 20,000 
580 at this value these three sets have been repurposed. That is the reason why we computed the value earlier. Correct? If you remember, we computed the value earlier and goods repurposed value, I mean to say from the seller's perspective, you will have to write the value because seller has taken back these three sets at 20,580. Now, if I am going to balance this particular account, if I am going to balance this particular account, obviously this account will not get closed. Correct? 30,000 minus 20,580. So, still there is a balance of 9420. Now, what is the significance of this particular balance? This balance carried down. This is your balancing figure, of course. And you, this is your higher vendor account. This balance carried down simply shows that you are still supposed to pay 9,420 rupees to the seller. Why you are supposed to pay to the seller 9,420 rupees? Because still two sets are with you. So that means this amount reflects the payment due against those assets which are retained by the buyer. This figure shows, this figure shows that this figure shows the amount the amount due to the buyer to the seller or to the higher vendor against two sets retained against two sets retained means two sets are still lying with the buyer so still we are supposed to pay 9420 is it clear to you or not this is how you are going to prepare the higher vendor account once you have prepared the higher vendor account obviously you would like to know obviously you would like to know okay i will stretch some more space Okay, now I will prepare the account TV sets account TV sets account. Why we are preparing TV sets account? Could you tell me? So we want to know about the loss. In fact, we have already computed the amount of loss if you have if you remember. Correct. We have already computed the amount of loss, but still we are going to actually prepare this particular account. So if I am going to prepare the TV sets account, first of all, here I am going to write on 1 1 2020. I think this was the date on which we purchased the item from the higher vendor. Five sets, total cash price 1 lakh. We will reach the end of the year. 31st 12 2020 we will charge the depreciation our because we are preparing this account in our work so we are going to charge depreciation at the rate of 20 percent 20,000 20,000 balance carried down balance carried down is 80,000 balance carried down is 80,000 that means from the perspective of the buyer from the perspective of the buyer, these five sets are commanding a value of 80,000 at the end of the first year. On 1 1 2021, now we are going to write here balance brought down. Now, balance brought down is how much? That is equal to 80,000. Again, you are going to reach the end of the year, 31st of 12, 2021. Again, you are going to charge depreciation at the rate of 20%, 16,000. So now the value of these five sets in the opinion, in your opinion, in the buyer's opinion is 64,000. 1-1-2022. Balance brought down. 64,000. 64,000. Correct? Now, 31st of 12, 2021. We will write here by depreciation once again and depreciation will be equal to 12,800. 12,800. It means the five sets, just to make you understand better, suppose if I subtract from 64,000, 
12,800. I will be left up with 51,200. You need not require to compute this in this manner, but just to make the point a little bit clear. If I am going to subtract depreciation from 64,000, it means at the end of the third year, the value of five sets is equal to 51,200 in our opinion. Now, out of these five sets, we have just noticed that three sets have been repurposed by the higher vendor. So, if I am going to write here higher vendor, if I am going to write here by higher vendor, I will have to write the value at which he repurposes the item 20,580 if you remember. That means out of 51,200, at the end of the third year, 64,000 minus 12,800 value of five sets is 52, 51,200. And out of 51,000 worth of value, three sets have been taken back at 20,580. So logically, so logically now the balance should be at least this much. Out of 51,200, if I am going to subtract 20,580, then the balance should be equal to 30,620. The balance of two sets should be equal to 30,620. It is as simple as that. But the problem is that we have already computed the closing balance. The closing balance should have been this much. But your closing balance you have already found out as per your working note number 3. We have already determined the value of two TV sets which are lying with the buyer if you remember. We did in working number 3. Is it clear to you or not? In working note number 3, which we did, I will show you. This is the value, 20,480. Are you getting my point or not? So, value should have been 30,620. But the value, actually closing value is 20,480. So, that is why... Value should have been this much, but value is 20,480. So that is why there is a loss of 10,140. And in fact, we have already computed the amount of loss. You need not require to do such thing. This is just for understanding. First, you write the depreciation. This value you are already having from your working note number two. If you want to write work from working note number two or step number two. And then we have already computed the amount of profit 10,140 that is also from working note number two or you can take it as a balancing figure. And this value is also with us. So after writing all these value, then this must, must get closed. Is it clear to you or not? So this is how you are going to do this particular question. And then, and then books of Books of Purchaser. Sorry, Books of Vendor. Books of Vendor. In Books of Vendor, generally under partial repossession, I have already told you, ledger accounts are not asked, generally. But in case if it is asked, correct, they are going to ask you goods prepare goods repurchased account in the books of higher vendor correct we know that in the books of higher vendor we prepare higher purchaser account also but there is no need to prepare it you can do it by yourself instead i will prepare only goods repurchased account so goods repurchased account i am going to prepare First of all, I am going to write here two higher vendor. Three TV sets have been repurchased and three TV sets have been repurchased at 20,580. And it was given in the question that a higher vendor incurred some amount on repairs. I think right. Some amount on repairs to the extent of 5,000. And then he sold these items. Then he sold these items. For rupees 30,000 and that is why there will be a gain in this particular case. Profit and loss account 4420. So this is how you are going to prepare the accounts under partial repossession. Is it clear to you or not? So now we will pick up question number 3.1.
and this is another interesting question we come back to the question first let's move back okay after 3.1 we are now going to pick up 3. 3.1 you might be wondering such sheet is blank yes sometime lagging incurs so it creates a bit of problem so 3.1 is the question now which we are going to pick up you do one thing in the meantime actually first you go through the question correct and then we will take a break of five minutes and after five minutes I will start the class correct
will come again. So now we shall move over to, as I told you, question number. Just wait. Student net is creating a bit of problem. Anyway, 3.1 is the question now which we are going to pick up. Correct? 3.1. X, and it's a strong question. X purchased five trucks, correct? How many trucks X has purchased? Five trucks. Five trucks on higher purchase. Five trucks on higher purchase basis on 1st of October 2019. The cash price of each truck, the cash price of each truck is rupees 5,50,000. This is 5,50,000, correct? Further question says that X was to pay pay 20% of the cash price at the time of delivery. So 20% of cash price. Now your cash price will be 5 into 5,50,000. I think that will be equal to 27,50,000. You will take the 20% of 27,50,000. That will be your down payment. 20% of cash price at the time of delivery. And then 25% of the cash price at the end of each of four subsequent half year beginning from 31st of March 2019. And balance amount you will have to pay in four six monthly installment. One installment will be equal to 25% of cash price. Once again, you will have to take 25% of the cash price. Further, Question says that on X failure to pay the installment due on 30th of September 2020, it was agreed that X could keep three trucks. Now this time out of five trucks, three sets have been left with the buyer. Out of five sets, three sets have been left with the buyer. It was agreed that X could keep three trucks. Correct? On the condition that the value of the two trucks would be adjusted against the amount due. Indirectly, it means two trucks have been repurposed and the trucks being valued at cost less 25%. Further, it is given show the relevant account in the books of X. Assuming that the books of accounts are closed every year on 31st of March and depreciation is 15% is charged on the original cost of the trucks. This is the question. Correct? And it's a strong question. So, let's Go through okay. Now, first of all, as usual, we are going to analyze the question. And in order to analyze the question, question number 3.1, we are picking up 3.1. And we shall now analyze the question. The story of the question is like this it is always better to spend some time. In analyzing the question, your story begins on 1st of October. 1st of October 2019, you purchased how many trucks? You purchased five trucks. Five trucks. Five trucks. Cash price is 5,50,000 per truck. 5,50,000 per truck. This is per truck cash price. And it was given in the question that you are supposed to make a payment of 20% down payment. So your down payment is equal to 20% of 5,50,000. Now if you will compute, sorry, first of all, you will have to take the total cash price. So your total cash price will be equal to, just wait, your total cash price will be equal to 5 into 5,50,000. Now 5,50,000 into 5 is equal to 27,50,000. And if I will take 20% of that, 27,50,000, it will be equal to 5,50,000. So your down payment will also be equal to 5,50,000. That is 20% of 27,50,000. Correct. This is the scenario on the first day. And now the question further says that three more installments need to be, sorry, four more installments need to be paid after six months. So after six months means 31st of uh, 3, 2020. On this date, my first installment will become due. 
then on 30th of September 2020, my second installment will be due. Then next six months, 31st of March 2021, third installment will become due. And finally, on 30th, 30th of September 2022, my fourth installment will become due. Is it clear to you or not? So this is the scenario of this particular question. Also in this particular question, it was stated that default was committed at the time of second installment that is on 30th of September 2020. Is it clear? Now, first of all, let me also show you the computation of, let me also show you the computation of installment. It was stated in the question that your one installment will be equal to 25% of the cash price. So 25% you will compute off. As I have already told you, your cash price is 5 into 5 lakh 50,000. So 27 lakh 50,000 into 25% will be equal to 6 lakh 87,500. So your first installment will be equal to 6 lakh 87,500 and so on. And your second installment will also be equal to 6 lakh 87,500. Fourth installment 6 lakh 87,500. And your fourth installment will also be equal to this much. However, as I told you, at the time of second installment, default has been committed. Further in this particular question, you were also given what? You were also given regarding rate of depreciation. As far as rate of depreciation is concerned, in this particular question, it was stated that rate of depreciation of buyer is 15% on original cost and regarding what we call uh, a seller it was given that rate of depreciation is 25 percent because he took back two sets and valued them at 25 percent less further in this particular question as far as repossession is concerned repossession is concerned out of five trucks only two trucks have been repossessed two trucks have been repossessed two trucks repossessed and we can say that three are retained by the buyer that means three trucks are still with the buyer further in this particular question you must have noticed that there is no rate of interest. We went through the entire question and there is no rate of interest. That means in this question we have the cash price but we are not having the rate of interest and you know that when rate of interest is not given how to compute in that particular case. Correct? Step number one. Calculation of calculation of interest. In order to compute interest in order to compute interest, first of all, I need to compute the higher purchase price. What is your higher purchase price? Sir, higher purchase price is equal to down payment. What is your down payment? We have computed down payment equal to 5,50,000. And four installments, 6,87,500. Second installment six lakh eighty seven thousand five hundred. Third installment six lakh eighty seven thousand five hundred. And your fourth installment is how much? Six lakh eighty seven thousand five hundred. That will be equal to thirty three lakh. So your total higher purchase price is equal to thirty three lakh. If from the higher purchase price, I am going to subtract cash price. Your cash price is 5 sets into 5,50,000. That is equal to 27,50,000. That is equal to 27,50,000. This is the scenario of this particular question. Now, if I am going to subtract from 33 lakh, Cash price 27,50,000, I will get 5,50,000. This 5,50,000 is your interest. 
this is your interest. Now, in order to in order to compute interest, as you know, this is computation of interest. Under computation of interest, first we computed the interest amount, and now we will compute. First of all, first of all, I will write in fact total higher purchase price. It's a pretty boring thing, but we have to do that. We can't help it. Thirty-three lakh. Then I will subtract the down payment. Now, as far as your down payment is concerned, that is five lakh fifty thousand. Now you subtract from thirty-three lakh. 5 lakh 50 thousand you are going to get um, how much you are going to get 27 lakh 50 thousand or something like that 27 lakh 50 thousand subtract the first installment 6 lakh 87 thousand 500 this is your first balance now you subtract this one you will be left up with 20,62,500. This is your second balance. Now you subtract your second installment. Once again, 6,87,500. After subtracting this one, we get 13,75,000. Now this will become your third installment, third balance in fact. Then your third installment, very long question, 6,87,500. We will get 6,87,500. We will subtract the fourth installment because there are four installments. This is your fourth balance. And after this, there will be no balance, fortunately. Correct? When rate of interest is not given, this is how we have to move to compute the interest. Once you have determined the amount of interest, the next thing which you are supposed to do is write these balances. Correct? Now I will write these balances. Second step B was calculation of interest. Under calculation of interest, first of all we determine the interest, then we found out the balances. And now I will write here interest allocation. Interest allocation. In order to allocate the interest, in order to allocate the interest, in order to allocate the interest, you have to understand that allocation of interest. Just wait. In order to allocate the interest, what I will do, I will write the outstanding balances. Outstanding balances. The balances which we just found out. Correct? The first balance, correct? The first balance was 27,50,000. This was your first balance. Then second balance, which we found out was 20,62,500. Then third balance, 13,75,000. And then fourth balance. Fourth balance is 6,87,500. Correct? Now you take the ratios. I will take the ratios. Ratio will be equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. That means 1 by 10, 2 by 10, 3 by 10, and 4 by 10. This is how you have taken the ratio. Is it clear to you? Second point is now your interest amount was 5,50,000. Don't forget it. So you will allocate 5,50,000 correct in this manner, 5,50,000 into 4 by 10. If I will allocate 5,50,000 into 4 by 10, I will get 2,20,000.
two lakh twenty thousand. Then one five lakh fifty into three by ten one lakh sixty five thousand. This is how I will determine the interest. Two by ten or five lakh fifty one lakh ten thousand. One by ten will be equal to fifty five thousand. This is how interest is determined. Actually, to be very honest with you, this I took a long way of computing the interest. Very quickly, you could have uh, found out the interest. For example, once you will have to determine the interest by taking the difference between the higher purchase price and the cash price, which is five lakh fifty. But you can avoid this long step because it's a pretty boring step, isn't it or not? How can you avoid it? See here. Just think of how many installments are there in the question, sir. One, two, three, four installments are there. Correct. You simply reverse these installment. You write four, three, two, one, and in this ratio you allocate the interest because ultimately we did in this ratio it's four is to three is to two is to one. But you can apply this shortcut approach only when its amount of installment is same. When amount of installment is same. Then only you can actually apply this shortcut approach. Otherwise, if amount of installment will differ, then you will have to find out the balances first. Correct. So now we have determined the interest. After having determined the interest, now the next thing is that we have to do the working. That is step number C: value of the goods repossessed. Now you will determine value. Of goods repossessed, as as we did in the last question, value of goods repossessed, value of goods repossessed. Now you will find out the value of the goods repossessed. I have already told you value of the goods repossessed need to be found out only from the perspective of the vendor. However, you must also find it out from the perspective of the buyer because. By doing that, you will be able to know the amount of loss in advance. How many trucks have been repossessed? Think coolly. Two trucks. And what is the cost price or cash price of that particular truck? So, cost price is five lakh fifty thousand. Are you sure? Let me check up. Right, five lakh fifty thousand. Now, let me know. Two into five lakh fifty thousand, I think, is equal to eleven lakh. You write the eleven lakh in the column of vendor and buyer both. From buyer's perspective, the cost is eleven lakh, so vendor will also write eleven lakh. But the problem is that now you think of, think of in the spanner, what was the life span of the question? For when I say life span of the question, for example, in the last question, the default was committed on the third installment, on the third installment. But now here the default has been committed within twelve months. That means at the end of the first year itself, because on first of October two thousand nineteen the story began, and on thirtieth of September two thousand twenty the story ended because default is committed. So that means life span of the question is just one year. Life span of the question is for one year. That means when you will find out the value of the goods repossessed, you will need you need to keep an eye on the life span. Now in this question, you have to compute depreciation only for one year, from from first of October two thousand nineteen till thirtieth of uh, September two thousand twenty. So that is one year. So depreciation for one year. Now vendor's rate of depreciation was given in the question. I think it was twenty five percent. So you will write here two lakh seventy five thousand, and rate depreciation was fifteen percent as far as buyer was concerned. So one lakh sixty five thousand. That mean at the end of the one year, that mean on thirtieth of September two thousand twenty, the value is equal to eight lakh twenty five thousand from the point of view of vendor. However. From the buyer's perspective, the value is nine lakh thirty-five thousand only. So, in buyer's perspective, the value is nine lakh thirty-five, but vendor took it back only for eight lakh twenty-five thousand. So that is why it is a loss to buyer, and the amount of loss will be equal to one lakh ten thousand if you are going to take the difference. So, in this manner, you have been able to find out the loss itself. So, in this question, value of goods repossessed, you have already found out. After having found out the value of the goods repossessed, now your next step should be 
to find out the value of the goods retained. Retained means those trucks which are still with the buyer. Value of trucks or goods retained. Retained means which are still with the buyer. So in order to find out the value of trucks retained, how many trucks have been retained? Three trucks. And cost price was 5 lakh 50 thousand. Correct? Cost price was this much only, isn't it or not? So, one lakh six, how much it will be equal to? Sixteen lakh fifty thousand. Sixteen lakh fifty thousand. Now, buyer's rate of depreciation because value of the goods retained with by buyer. So we will apply the rate of depreciation of buyer. 15% is rate, isn't it? So 2,47,500. That means at the end of one year, when the repossession took place, from buyer's angle, the value of three trucks, value of three trucks which are at his disposal, their value will be equal to this much, 14,2,500. 14,500. Is it clear to you? This is nothing but balance carried down of your truck account. Now in this question, I will prepare hmm. Now in this in this particular question, now we will prepare Step number E. Books of Purchaser. Now obviously the purchaser is going to prepare a higher vendor account. So now you prepare the higher vendor account. When you will prepare the higher vendor account, I think this much of space is enough or should be enough. On 110 2019, we have purchased truck and we purchased five trucks at a price of 5 lakh 50 thousand, so 27 lakh 50 thousand. On the same date, we are going to 110 2019 pay the down payment to bank down payment we made five lakh fifty thousand correct and then after six months we will reach thirty first of three two thousand twenty and we will pass the entry for interest due what was the interest in the first installment which we computed? Our interest was 5,50,000 total interest into 4 by 10, 2,20,000 is interest. And on 31st of 3, 2020, we will pay the first installment. The first installment is 6,87,500. So balance carried down will be equal to 13 lakh. 32,500. 13,32,500. Now, on 1 4 2020, I will write the balance brought down. And the balance brought down is equal to 13,52,500. Thirty first of 3, 2000. 21 sorry now we will reach 30th of september 30th of september after six months because six monthly installment we have to pay so 30 30th of september 2020 by interest interest for the second installment which we computed 5 lakh 50 into 3 by 10 1 lakh 65 thousand 
Now, on 30th of September 2020, you are supposed to pay second installment. You were supposed to pay the second installment, which you did not pay. So because you did not pay, what will happen? The hire vendor will take back the truck. When he will take back the truck, you will write here to truck account, reposition, working note number, whatever working note number is there, you put up over here. He trucks, sorry, two trucks were repossessed. And we found out the value of the two trucks which were repossessed, which we did the working over here itself, 8,25,000. 8,25,000. So two trucks have been taken over back by what we call hire vendor at 8,25,000. So whatever balance which we are going to get in this particular account, that will be equal to 10,72,500. I think so, 10,72,500. This balance shows that we are still supposed to make a payment of 10,72,500 to the higher vendor. Why? Because we are still holding upon what we call three trucks. Is it clear to you or not? This is how we have to move up. And just give me a time. We will also prepare, we will also prepare truck account, truck account. In order to prepare the truck account, first of all, I am going to write to hire vendor, the date was 1-10-2019. And we purchased five trucks at a price of 27,50,000. Then we will reach the end of the accounting year. After six months, our accounting year will end on 31st of 3, 2020. Correct? You will provide the depreciation. That is 27,50,000 into 15 percent into 6 by 12. So what will be your depreciation amount? Depreciation amount will be equal to 2 lakh 6,250. At the end of the first year, Balance will be equal to 25,43,750. 25,43,750. This is your balance. So as far as first year, first year accounting is concerned, that is over. Now we will move into the second year. One for, in the beginning of the second year, 1 for 2021. First year. 20 in fact, and then I am going to write balance brought down, which is 25 lakh 43,750. Generally, the depreciation is provided at the end of the accounting year. Now, if I am going to reach, if I am going to write accounting year end, it will be 31st of 3, 2021. The accounting year will end on this particular date. But problem is that a story is ending before the accounting year. Why story is ending before the accounting year? Because on, much before the accounting year end, on 30th of September 2020, the trucks have been repossessed. Correct? So that is why this time I will have to stop at 30th of September 2020. So again I will have to compute the depreciation. And again I will have to compute the depreciation for 6 months. Correct? So, amount will be same, 27,50,000 because depreciation is to be provided on original cost. So, original cost is 27,50,000. Again, you have to provide the depreciation for 6 months. So, again, it will be equal to 2,6,250. And now, as I told you in the last question, you need not require to do any analysis. All you have to do is just think of the fact at what value Higher vendor has taken back the 
two trucks. We have already computed that two trucks have been taken over at 8,25,000. You write this value. We have already computed the amount of loss because when he took back the asset, we incurred a loss of 1,10,000. This we have already found out. And we also know the balance carried down in the truck account, which we have already computed. We know that we are having three trucks and their value we have already determined 14,2,500. This value is from your working note number two. Even this particular value is from your step number or working note number. And this value is from your working note number three. So now this account will get automatically closed. Now in this question in the books of higher, in the books of higher vendor, no need because no, no information is given with respect to uh, the fact that after taking the goods, how much uh, is spent, uh, uh, what worth of amount we spent on the expenses and amount of sale. If no such information is given, there is no point in preparing any account. I have already told you, generally when question of partial repossession are asked in the examination, generally they are going to ask of you, simply find out the value of the goods repossessed or value of the goods retained and the amount of loss and the computation of the interest. This is all examiners are basically interested in finding out the value. This is your uh, partial reposition. So we have already done question number 3.1 and let me come back to my original sheet. It takes a bit of time to recap the data when we move to other pages. So that is the reason. So 3.2 we have done and uh, what happened? Taking pretty long time. So I hope now partial reposition, you must have comprehended uh, quite well the accounting pattern. Now there is a very interesting question with respect to with respect to 3.3 if you are going to pay attention towards this particular question. Today, there is some problem with respect to internet data. Anyway, in the meantime, we will go through the question. Three point three. X Transport Company purchased from Manish Motors. X Transport Company Limited is your purchaser and Manish Motors are your vendors. Question says that X Transport Company has purchased from Mani Manish Motors three tempos costing one lakh each on higher purchase basis on 1-1-2015. One, one, Similar to the last question, 20% of the cost was to be paid down and the balance in three equal annual installment together with interest. Did you get some inkling when you went through the word what we call together with interest? Whenever word together with interest is written, it means the, the amount of installment is not including the amount of interest. It is exclusive of what we call interest. Is it clear to you? So, and the balance in three equal annual installment together with interest at 9% at the end of each year. X Transport Company paid the installment due on 31st of December 2015 but could not pay thereafter. They paid the first installment on 31st of December 2015 because first installment was due on 31st December 2015. They paid it but thereafter they did not pay. Now question says that Manish Motors agreed to leave one tempo with the purchaser on 1-1-2016. 
Now problem in this case that in this particular question a story or lifespan of the question is only one year because the moment the first year will end on 31st of December 2015 on the very next day our dealer that is seller who was a pretty cruel person you may say so actually he did not give us any time and on the very next day he took back the asset. That means this time we are not going to reach the end of the second year. That means in the beginning of the second year itself the reposition is done. That means interest computation need to be done only for one year itself. Now question further says that adjusting the value of the other two tempos against the amount due on that date. So Manish Motor agreed to leave one tempo with us. Three tempos we had purchased. One tempo we are retaining. Two tempos have been repossessed in this particular case. The tempos recovered were valued on the basis of 30% depreciation annually. Further question says that X Transport Company Limited charges depreciation on tempos at the rate of 20%. Correct? That is purchaser. Purchaser's rate of depreciation is 20% and rate of depreciation of seller is 30% on diminishing balance method basis. And in the next line, it is written that Manish Motors Limited incurred 10,000 on repairs of tempos repossessed and resold them at a profit of 5% on cost. So in this question, we have to find how we are going to solve this particular question. Let's have a look. So under the first step, as usual, first of all, we will, this is your 3.3, .3. we will do the analysis. What is the use of this analysis? There are two uses. One, it simplifies the process of thinking, number one. And secondly, and secondly, when later on, sometime back, you are going to revise the chapter. You need not require to look at the question itself. You can simply look at the analysis to go through the question. That is the point. It is better always to write. Correct? The more you will write, the more it, it is going to help you. So in order to do the analysis, first of all, let's have a look what was given in the question. one one 2015 is the date on which agreement took place and we purchased three tempos. So, three tempos were purchased. Three tempos. And cost price of the tempo was 1 lakh each. So, total cash price. See, cash price is from the perspective of the seller and cost price is from the perspective of the purchaser. So cash price or cost price is equal to 3 lakh. Now on this particular date it, it was given to us that 20% is our down payment. 20% is down payment. So 20% of this is will be will be equal to 60,000. Now question says that the balance amount, you need to understand this particular word, correct? Question says that the balance amount was to be paid in three equal installment together with interest. Now this is the cash price or this is the cash price. Now what is the balance then? Your balance will be equal to 2,40,000. Obvious, obviously this is the balance of cash price. And question says that this balance need to be paid in three installments. In three installments, equal installments. So if I am going to divide it by three, one equal installment will be equal to 80,000. 80,000. 80,000. But question has also stated that your installment will be 80,000 plus 9% interest plus 9% interest, then it will become gross installment because it is your pure installment. 
now it will become gross installment then we will add nine percent is it clear to you or not so this is how we have to move about in this particular question secondly so your rate of interest is also known to you now now your first year will end on 31st of 12 2015 correct you paid the installment on this day but problem is that on the very next day that means in this particular question the story will remain till up to 1 1 2016 we, we need not require to move to 31st of 12 2016 or for that instance 31st of 12 2017 we need not require to go over to these dates because in this particular question on the very next day on the very next day he repurchased two item left one item with the purchaser so as far as repossession is concerned as far as repossession is concerned uh, that is two trucks have been repossessed two tempos and one tempo retained one tempo retained correct is it clear to you further in this particular question it is also given that the tempos which were repossessed were repossessed at 30 percent and buyer's rate of depreciation in fact rate of depreciation you may say buyer's rate of depreciation is 20 percent in the question and seller's rate of depreciation is 30 percent correct and rate of interest we are already having nine percent cash price is also there rate of interest is also there so as far as calculation of interest is concerned that should not be a big issue now we are going to solve the question solution correct in order to solve the question actually in order to solve the question in between i have received my t just wait for a while or you do one thing i will just allow me to just allow me five minutes of time and in in the meantime, you can do this question, I think. Correct? So just allow. I'm very sorry, but I can't help it. Uh, I have received the tea, so I will have to take five minutes off. So in the meantime, you try to do it by yourself.
So welcome again. And sorry for two breaks today. Actually, generally, I'm not very fond of it, but I was also supposed to attend a phone call also. And besides that, I happen to receive the tea. I hope you must have, by, by this particular time, you must have computed the interest. But still, we will con uh, compute calculation of interest. This is your first step. Calculation of interest. In this question, this is second method. You write cash price. Again, you write gross installment. GI interest. Cash price portion. Cash price we computed, it was equal to 3 lakh. And then on 1 1 2015, I am supposed to make down payment. Down payment 20% 60,000. No interest, entire payment for cash price portion. So your gross installment will also be 60,000. Zero installment. 2,40,000 is the remaining amount. We will reach the end of the year, 31st of 12, 2015. When we will reach the end of the year, the first installment. Whenever we use the word installment, that means we are referring to gross installment. But problem is that we are not having the gross installment at this moment. We are having pure installment of 80,000 because your gross installment is 80,000 plus 9% interest. Isn't it or not? Is it clear or not? Right. So, I will compute 9% of 240,000 first. So, 21,600. First, I have computed the interest, 9% of 2 lakh this, 2 lakh 40. Then I will add 21,600 with 80,000 to get my gross installment. My gross installment will be 1 lakh 1,600. I hope you got. And cash price portion obviously will be this much. You will subtract 80,000. Now, problem is this, that you need not require to go further. Correct? We need not require to go further because on the very next day, the asset has been taken back. So there is no need to compute further interest. Is it clear to you or not? So step number two, now we move over to solution step two. Under solution step two, what we do, we find the value of the goods repurposed. Value of the goods. Value of the goods repurposed. In order to find out the value of the goods repurposed, what you are supposed to do? What you are supposed to do? You will have to find the value from the perspective of the vendor and from the perspective of the buyer so that we can get the loss amount in advance. First of all, I will have to write here the cost price. How many trucks have been repurposed? Two. So two Tempos have been repurposed, I think, right. And the cost price is 1 lakh. So I will write here 2 lakh and 2 lakh. Rate of depreciation of these two parties obviously will differ. So you will write the depreciation. Depreciation is 30 percent, so 60,000. And depreciation is 20 percent, so 40,000. Is it clear to you? So that means at the end of the year, first year, from the viewpoint of vendor, these assets, these two tempos are commanding a value of 260, while the value, sorry, commanding a value of 140,000, I have added instead of subtraction. Value is 140,000 from the perspective of the vendor. And from the perspective of buyer, the value is 160000 So, item having a value of 160 were repossessed at 140 Obviously, there is a loss to the buyer to the extent of 20000 Correct? In this question, we need not require to move to the end of the accounting year. Because on the very next date, the goods have been repossessed. Is it clear to you or not? We will also find out the value of the goods. Step number three. So now we will determine the value of the goods.
retained. One tempo is still lying with the buyer. One tempo is still lying with the buyer. Don't forget that. <laughs> Correct? So we will find out the value. Now cost of cost of one tempo is equal to one lakh because this working is done always from the buyer's perspective. So we will use the depreciation rate of 20%. That is 20,000. That means at the end of the first year, the value of one tempo which is at the disposal of the buyer is 80,000. Now, step number four, ledger accounts. Purchasers books. In the books of the purchaser, you are going to prepare higher vendor account. And in order to prepare the higher vendor account, there is the scale. In the higher vendor account, obviously on 1 1 2015, first of all, I am going to write by tempos. We have purchased three tempos at a cost of 3 lakh. 1 1 2015, we will make the down payment. And down payment which we made was equal to 20%, that is 60,000. End of the first year, 31st of 12, 2015, interest. We computed interest equal to 21,600. 31st of 12, 2015, I will write here to bank. First installment. In the account, you will always write gross installment. Correct? 1,1,600. After this installment, the balance carried down is 1,60,000. At the end of the one year, we are still supposed to make a payment of 1,60,000 to the vendor, it means. 1,1,2016. 1, balance brought down. That is 1,60,000. Now, generally what happens, we compute the interest at the end of the year. But in this particular question, we need to require to compute the interest because on the very first day, on the very first day, 1 1 2016, repossession has been done. Correct? So, a higher vendor has taken back some tempos in this particular case. So, you will write here tempos as per your working note or step number two. He has taken back the tempos at 1 lakh 40,000. Correct? So, you will write here 1 lakh 40,000. One lakh forty thousand. So whatever balance now we will get, this balance reflects on one one two thousand twenty. Because we were supposed to pay on one one two thousand sixty one lakh sixty thousand, and on one one two thousand sixteen, two uh, temples have been re repossessed at a valuation of one lakh forty. So quite obviously, twenty thousand we are still supposed to pay him for the one tempo which are still lying with the buyer now we shall also prepare in this particular case tempos account tempos account if i am going to prepare the tempo account first of all i will have to write who was the debit site? 1-1-2015 one, one, to higher vendor account. 3 lakhs. 
I will reach the end of the accounting year on 31st of 12, 2015. Shall write here by depreciation. Our rate of depreciation is 20%, so 60,000. So balance carried down at the end of the first year is 2,40,000. Now I will write here on 1, 1, 2016, balance brought down. When I will write here balance brought down, that will be equal to 2,40,000. Because the story is ending on 1, 1, 2016 itself. So no question of providing depreciation as we normally do in the second year. Because depreciation will be provided at the end of the accounting year. We are in the very first day of the second year. So no question of providing depreciation. So on this date, the tempos have been repossessed by the higher vendor as we have already seen. He took back two tempos at a valuation of 1,40,000. And when he took back two tempos at 140, we incurred a loss as we computed earlier to the extent of 20,000 because their value was 160. He took, took them back at 140 and balance carried down. We can consider it as a balancing figure also. And in fact, we have already computed the balance which we have done over here, 80,000. So two, one tempo is lying with us and its value is equal to 80,000. So that is how you are going to prepare the ledgers in the books of the purchaser. In the books of the purchaser. Besides the ledger, you can also, just allow me a minute or so, We will also prepare that is next step is vendors books in this particular case. Vendors books. In the books of the vendor, I am going to write here what I am going to write here goods repurchased account. Because in this question, some information is given with respect to what we call what happened with the repurchased goods, correct? So we shall prepare here goods repurchased account. So we shall write here first of all to hire purchaser. From higher purchaser, we repurchase, repurchase two tempos at a valuation of 1,40,000. Now, question states that we spent some amount on repairs. So, we spent some amount on repairs to the extent of 10,000. Now, if I am taking back some item at 140, so and I'm spending 10,000. So for me now, total cost is 1,50,000. And question is telling that we sold these items by bank. We sold these tempos at cost plus 5%. Now cost is 1,50,000 plus 5%. You sold them at cost plus 5%, correct? So you will add here 7,500. That means you sold these items for 1,57,000. In fact, you resold these items to somebody else and your profit will be equal to 7,500. 7,500. This is how you are supposed to do this particular question. Is it clear to you or not? So, as far as this topic is concerned, we have done today, we have already taken a pretty long session today, correct? And so after having done this particular question, at least you try to do 3.4, you try to do 3.5, you try to do 3.6, at least two questions, you, three questions you try to do. I already told you it's a pretty 
significant and formidable what we call section and you need to have a supreme command over it and i'm sure after having gone through this particular session each one of you must be feeling a bit of confidence now to tackle any question which may be which may be tossed up from this particular section correct so 3.4 is similar to the one which i did earlier so you should be in a position to do this particular question 3.4 correct easy question not tough one even 3.5 should be you should be in a position to do at least if you are not preparing ledger account you should be in a position to do all the what we call workings uh, questions have been given in a solved manner you can do that but don't look at the solution so shall meet you in the next session with something new as usual correct so till then it's time to take leave of you and till that particular time have a good day and good night also